Okay, hello and welcome. Today we want to talk about position, velocity, and acceleration, and kind of how we can use differentiation to relate to those ideas. So derivative can be used to determine the slope, but it can also be used to determine the rate of change of one variable with respect to another. And you've seen that if you've been asked to find, um, you know, the change of y with respect to x or something like that. So, and we're talking about the phys position function. We're usually talk talking about um, the function, it's usually written as s of t, right? That's the position relative to the origin of an object as a function of time. Um, and you can think of objects moving along a straight line like people, cars, rivers, or vertical lines, balls, rockets, um, something that goes subject to gravity. But even though we have a position function, um, that position changes over time. And when we talk about that change, the change of the position over time, uh, that's our velocity function. So our velocity function is written as v of t, but it's also equal to s prime of t. That velocity function is the change of the position function over time. So that's our derivative. Um, and then we can also talk about our speed. Well, speed is just going to be the absolute val vo the absolute volume, the absolute value of velocity. So speed does not indicate direction, right? You could go, be going in a velocity forwards or backwards. You can have speed forward or backwards. So speed of an object has to either be positive or zero, no matter what direction you're going. Um, and it's just measured by the absolute value of velocity. And then finally, we can talk about acceleration. Acceleration is the instantaneous rate of change, which I'm just going to write as the IROC, the instantaneous rate of change of velocity. Well, what's that mean? It tells how quickly we speed up or slow down. It's the change of velocity with respect to time. So that's going to be written as A of t, which you can think of as the derivative of velocity, which is the second derivative of the position, all right? So let's actually kind of apply some of this. We're gonna look at a graph here and talk about um, some position things. So here we've got a, a, the velocity of a function, right? So this is our derivative of the position function. And we're gonna assume that the positive direction is to the right, okay? So this is, if it's positive, it's going to the right. If it's a negative, it's going to the left. So when is this particle moving at a constant speed? Well, it's gonna be a constant speed from zero to one because the derivative, we're talking about speed, which is gonna be, plus the, der the slope here is constant. So it's going to be from zero is less than t is less than one. When is that position moving to the right? Well, we've already talked about if it's positive, it's moving to the right. So from zero to t to two, it's moving to the right. When's it moving to the left? Well, if it's negative, our velocity function is negative, it's moving to the left. So from two to five, two is less than t is less than five. When is the particle speeding up? Well, we can think about a particle speeding up when the direction or the when the velocity and the acceleration are the same. So my velocity is negative and then my acceleration is negative. Well, when's that happening? Here, my velocity is negative and the slope of that is also negative. So from two to three, that particle is speeding up. I'm gonna talk about it right here. Two is less than t is less than three. That's when my particle is speeding up. Well, when is my particle slowing down? My particle is going to be slowing down when the velocity is opposite from the acceleration. So here my velocity is positive, but my acceleration is negative. Here my velocity is negative, but my acceleration is positive. So it's going to be slowing down from 1 to 2, and then again from 3 to 5. So when is our velocity increasing? When's the velocity going up, basically? It looks to me like that's happening from three to five. So three is less than t is less than five. And when's it decreasing? It's decreasing basically from one to two, and then again from two to three. And I didn't draw this very well, um, but there is kind of a, a little turn here, I guess, at that. So I'll write them separately. Um, I don't know if that would make a big difference on the exam if you wrote it separately or not, because it kind of is continuous. But anyway, I think you get the idea. So are the answers to six and seven the same as the answers to four and five? Well, four and five 
we had totally different answers from 6 and 7, right? We did not have answers. So no, our answers are not the same because the velocity increases where the acceleration is positive. All right, so let's talk some more here. I'm going to go over here to number 9. How fast is the particle moving at t equals 4 and in what direction? Well, we want to know the absolute, velo the absolute value at v of 4, which is going to be equal to 5. That slope there, if I did the math, and I'm not going to do right now because I think you can kind of see it, is equal to 5. And what direction is it going? It's a negative direction or to the left, right? Because we already established that negative means it's going to the left. What's its velocity at t equals 4? Well, at t equals 4, our velocity, v of t, is equal to negative 5, right? I could do that. I could just do, um, yeah, anyway. Negative 10 minus 0 over, I think it's 5 minus 3. That would equal negative 5. So what's the average velocity over the interval from 2 to 3? Well, the average velocity here, I can do a negative 10 minus 0 over 3 minus, did I want 3 minus 2 from negative 2, from 3 to, two, 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 two. negative 10 to 0, negative 10 minus 0 is negative 10 over 1, but actually because I have two time, two points in time here, you can see um, my average, I'm going to divide by 2, so my average velocity is going to be negative 5. And when does our particle change direction? Well, we can see that our particle changes direction here at 2. Hopefully you can see that. Here at 2, it's going from positive direction to the right to negative direction to the left. So at x equals 2. All right, we're going to continue a few more questions with this. So I'm turning it over. I've drawn the same uh, image. Still not drawn very well, but hopefully it makes sense. So how far does the particle move during this first uh, first second, I did, it's kind of awkwardly written, how far does the particle move during the first second and which way? Well, during the first second, it moves five units, right? So this is how far it's moved, five units to the right, five units per time, first second, I guess, um, to the right. And how far to the right does the particle go and when does it arrive there? Okay, well, that you can kind of see. Here it's gone 5, here it's gone from 5 to 0. So we kind of have to think, um, you know, like what's, basically if I took this as a square, and this is kind of getting into integration, uh, which we'll touch on later, but basically it wouldn't, if this is 5, right, this is not 5, this is half of 5, so that's 7.5, right? So 5 plus 7, or 5, this would be 2.5, excuse me, so 5 plus 2.5 is going to be 7.5, units at t equals 2. All right. And what's the total distance traveled by the particle? Well, this we already established was 7.5, but what about here? Well, here, again, you can kind of look. It looks to me like from here to here, ugh, this is drawn so terribly because this should be at negative 10 right there, but um, this would be 5, and this would be 5, right? Actually, one. Sorry, I misspoke. So this actually, imagine, because this is so poorly drawn, this is negative 10 right here. Here you've got one unit of 10, 20, 30, right? Yeah. So 10, 20, 30, but then you gotta take this, looks like it's been cut in half. So this is actually gonna be 15. So we're gonna have 7.5 plus 15, which is equal to 22.5 units. That's the total distance traveled by the particle. All right, what's the particle's position after five seconds? Well, after five seconds, looks like we've gone 7.5 units to the right, right? And then we've gone 15 units to the left. So we've ended up being total 7.5 units to the left, right? That's our displacement. And what's our average time, or I'm sorry, our average velocity, I'll go down here. 
of the particle over the five second interval. Well, to find that, we're going to take our displacement over our time. Well, our displacement we already established was 7.5 minus 15 divided by 5, which is going to be equal to negative 1.5. So are these answers the same? No. 15, uh, the answer is number 15, so 22.5, so or I'll just say number 15, is the total distance. And number 16 is displacement, right? So it's going forward and it's backwards, right? And hopefully you can kind of understand the difference between that, um, that it, it's going forwards and backwards. And so even though it's traveled a lot, it hasn't really gone very far. So let's talk about number 19. What's the average speed over this five second interval? Well, we're going to take the total distance divided by the time. So we're going to take 22.5 divided by 5 is equal to 4.5. That's our average speed. And when is the particle's acceleration, or what's the particle's acceleration over the first second? What's your answer mean? Well, our acceleration is equal to 0, right? The slope here is 0. Slope is 0. And that is because the velocity, velocity doesn't change. It's constant right? The derivative of a constant is zero, so our acceleration is zero. All right, so we have a few more here. 22, over what time intervals do we have negative, or I'm sorry, does it have negative acceleration? Yeah, when do we have negative, oh, did I skip 21? Well, I think I did, but I didn't write it down. So when do we have negative acceleration? Well, we have negative acceleration from one to two, and then again, from two to three, right? It's going from one to two, it's negative, from two to, when's it positive? Well, I'll write that here. Positive from, you can see, from three to five. Three to five, that's what our acceleration, our slope here is negative, our slope here is positive. When's it undefined? Well, we actually have two points in time where it's gonna be undefined. It's undefined here at one, and it's undefined at three. Something's happening there. It's the turn, right? So we have, it's undefined there. When's an interval where we have positive acceleration, but we're slowing down? Well, to me, it looks like that's happening from three to five. So our, our, we have positive acceleration here, but because we're going left, we're slowing down. So from three to five. And when is our acceleration negative, but we're speeding up? Well, that's happening from two to three. We're going to the left, so from two to three, we're going to the left, and we're going negative, so we're speeding up from two to three. And what's our acceleration from three to four? Well, that's just the slope of this, it's five. Acceleration is equal to five. What's the average acceleration on our five second interview, interval? Well, to find that, we're gonna take v of five minus v of zero, over five minus zero. So V of five is zero, right? Minus V of zero is five over five minus zero. So that gives us negative one. So our acceleration is negative one, our average acceleration. And over what time is the velocity decreasing at a rate of five feet per second? Well, it's decreasing from one to two, right? That would be our slope right there. So decreasing from one to two. Okay, hopefully all of that makes sense. I know it's kind of a lot to take in, but just kind of um, work through it. We'll do our uh, worksheet together in class, and any questions you have, please leave in the comments. Uh, if you've taken physics, this should relate to that a lot, so hopefully I helped make it clear and didn't muddy it up too much. All right, see you in class. Bye!